Hi, everyone. This is Matthew Cruz at Comstock Investments. I'm going to be sharing with you the July USDA supply demand report that came out at 11 a.m. Before we get started, I always got to show you our quick disclaimer that futures trading does involve risk. I'll let you read through that real quickly. So jumping right in, let's start with uh, old crop ending stocks. You can see that corn uh, production came in at 1.4 billion bushels. Uh, slightly below what the average trade estimate was looking for, soybeans at 255 compared to 233 for the average trade estimate. Wheat was at 580, very close to what the trade was looking for. Looking at new crop ending stocks, this is what the market is really focused on right now. Corn production at 2.262 uh, billion bushels compared to the average estimate of 2.249. So not too far off, but slightly above uh, what the trade was looking for. You can see that's uh, very close to where we're at the previous month. So not a lot of changes. I think the market was kind of building in more of a bullish reaction or more of a bullish report. And we did not get that today. So similar situation in the soybeans trade came in at 300. The average estimate was actually at 195. So the trade was looking for a uh, much more bullish uh, report today. And it was pricing that in and kind of the exact opposite happened. And so that's why we're seeing such a negative reaction in the market today. Uh, we were down 350 from last month for ending stocks in the soybeans. Um, it's just that the trade was looking for a lot bigger cut considering the, the lower acreage in soybeans that planted 4 million less acres in soybeans. Looking at the wheat, 592, uh, so a, a modest increase in the wheat stocks compared to the average estimate of 568 and last month's 562. This is where we see those major uh, changes in, in yield cuts that uh, everybody was looking for. So uh, they started out at 181.5 last month. That's where they've set the bar previous pretty high. Uh, for uh, national corn production yield, and they came in at 177.5 uh, bushels to the acre. The average trade was looking for at 176.1, so didn't quite give us the cut uh, that we were looking for. Um, some rate on the ranges they were looking for as low as 172 bushels per acre, and so um, we did get did get a cut, but it uh, wasn't as much as what we were hoping for, or what a lot of the trade was expecting. And so that's why we're seeing a negative reaction in the market on corn today. Looking at production, you're at 15.3 billion bushels. The average estimate was at 15.16, so um, a little bit higher than what the trade is looking for. So again, similar situation in the soybeans. Uh, the market was looking for a little bit of a cut, an average of 51.2 bushels per acre, and they actually came in, they left it unchanged, actually, at 52. So last month we were at, uh, uh, so this is this is wrong, This last month we are at 52 bushels per acre, and uh, the market was looking for a little bit of a, a cut there. You can see on the low end, um, they were at down 48.8, so they're actually looking for uh, uh, some severe cases of over a three bushel cut. And on the very high end, they left it unchanged. And uh, so basically the market came in at the high end of the production range. And uh, and so that increases our ending stocks then to 4.3 billion bushels compared to what the average trade was looking at at 4.244. Um, moving along, looking at global production, they're just kind of rearranging the deck chairs here. They uh, increased Brazil's Corn production by 1 million metric ton from 132 to 133 million metric tons in Brazilian corn. And they reduced it 1 million metric tons in the corn crop in Argentina. So uh, from 35 down to 34. So South America as a whole, the uh, Brazilian corn crop was left unchanged, as was the soybeans. So no major surprises there. Uh, no major surprises in Ukraine uh, corn production and wheat production as well. So pretty much left those unchanged. Looking at global ending stocks, the uh, corn came in at 314 million metric tons. Uh, so very close to what the average trade was looking for. No surprises there last month left uh, basically unchanged at 314.0. Soybeans at 121, uh, down modestly from the average at 121.4. And uh, looking at wheat, uh, actually down from 270 was that the average trade was looking for down to 266.5. And so um, looking at Chinese imports, 
you can see we're down from last year at 21.9. The USDA is projecting only 18 million metric tons in corn imports, and uh, but a modest boost, boost to soybeans from 91.6 last year, increasing that to 99. So breaking down the corn balance sheet, you can see here the adjustments that have been made. This is new crop uh, balance sheet for July. You can see those increase in production acres at 2.1. Um, million acres. And then you see the reduction here of four bushels to the acre. They did have a reduction from old crop ending stocks, mostly from de a decrease in exports of 50 million overall ending stocks. Despite all that change, we basically the uh, uh, reduction in, in the yield offset that that uh, increase in harvested acres. So overall, the ending stocks didn't change very much from 2.257 last month to 2.262. So a modest increase of 5 million bushels. Looking at soybeans, you can see here a reduction of 4 million acres from last month to this month, 87.5 to 83.5. Uh, what's frustrating is that essentially the USDA offset a lot of the uh, gains that we would have otherwise had by decreasing the the exports and so uh first off they did start off with 25 million bushels higher in beginning stocks that they pulled over from um last season you see that reduction of 210 million bushels here in in production uh and here's where we start to see the big cuts here at 125 million in, in exports so they're basically negating a lot of the gains that we would have otherwise had by you know, taking drastic cuts to the exports. Now, some of that is warranted. Some of it seems a little, um, I guess, uh, convenient, essentially, basically just dropping from 350 down to 300. And again, the market was looking for less than 200 million bushels in ending stocks. And so uh, it just seemed like the this was the USDA and their way of kind of propping up the numbers a little bit more than what we would have expected. And so, you know, uh, uh, the markets uh, or the ending stocks are that tight rather that a simple one bushel reduction in production, you know, basically takes our ending stocks down 83 million bushels. And so uh, there are, are scenarios where we can still get back down to 200, but uh, it just seemed like the ending stocks are, are a lot tighter than what the USDA is letting on at this point. So looking at U.S. wheat production, you can see starting out, they decreased planted acres by 300,000, but they increased harvested acres by 600,000 acres. They did increase our yield by 1.2 bushels per acre. That's how we get from this 44.9 to 46.1. So overall, that increased our production by 74 million bushels. Some of that was partially offset by beginning stocks being lower and also an increase in feed consumption as well. And so overall, our uh, ending stocks increased by a modest 30 million bushels from 562 to 592 million bushels. Kind of quickly, this is not the close, but this is how the market has uh, initially responded today to this report. You can see a pretty negative reaction lower. We were, we were kind of trading flat going into the, the trade, into this report today. And we're down 16 and a half at this point in December corn. So we're basically back to, I think the last time we were at this level was in uh, October of 2021. So uh, it's been quite a while since we've been at these levels, obviously. And so the market looks oversold, but uh, there's just so much negative news kind of coming in one right after the other that, uh, you know, we're not finding our, our footing here yet. And so this is not the close, but uh, so we'll, we'll see how that ends up. Looking at the soybeans, uh, you can see we have a pretty sharp reaction lower to what the trade was looking for. You can see leading up to it, we had we were up 50 cents about from a, uh, last Friday, and uh, the market was starting to price in what it expected to see a cut in, in production, and that didn't happen. And so that's why we're down 30 cents um, at the moment. But again, this is not the close, and so we'll have to see where we end up. But uh, um, hopefully we're, uh, you know, we see a kind of resistance here at this, I want to say 1320 area, new crop soybeans. Um, but if that doesn't hold, we could easily go back down below this 1275 area, new crop soybeans. But uh, the ending stocks are in the soybeans are still pretty tight historically. And I think uh, 
they'll get tighter as time goes on. And, and there still could be an additional cut in, uh, a few, I should say, a future cut in yield. But uh, USDA just wasn't ready to make that happen yet. And so it's a little bit harder to make that case in, in uh, the situation with corn right now just being as it is with uh, ending stocks at 2.2 billion, which is uh, a lot more corn than we need right now. Looking at wheat, uh, down 21 cents at the moment. This is not the close, but uh, you can see they did add that uh, uh, 30 million bushels to the ending stocks. And so a uh, little bit uh, on the higher end of what the trade was expecting. And so you can see while we're down here and uh, we've made a, a new monthly low. So wrapping up here, if you're a bull, you're going to point to that moisture demand is going to increase. There's still a lot of growing season left, uh, obviously, in the month of July. Um, in the case of corn, perhaps, that you're entering into pollination now. And so that moisture demand is going to increase. And a lot of those areas that were extremely dry in uh, May and early June, um, you know, a one inch rain isn't going to cut it, right? You know, they're going to burn through that pretty quick, especially as temperatures are going to increase. Uh, you could also make the argument that, uh, you know, while the crop yield can bounce back, that a lot of the damage has been irreversible up until this point. And so it's not coming back no matter how much rain. Now, a lot of it will, but not all of it. Uh, you could also argue that, um, you know, an increase in acres like what we had in the June report usually means lower yields overall, because a lot of those increases in yields aren't coming from maybe some of your prime growing regions. Uh, in the Midwest, there may be coming from some of the fringe areas in North Dakota, places like that, that are known for higher yields. And so that could be a drag on the overall uh, national yield. Uh, you can also talk about, uh, you know, cheap grain usually means to increase in demand. And so, um, you know, China likes those deals. And so hopefully with uh, kind of this repeat pre even prices that uh, China will step in and start buying more. If you're a bear, you're going to talk about the drought recovery that's been taking place. We have been getting a lot better rains in Iowa and Illinois here recently. And, uh, and so far, it looks like more moisture is on the way. Um, you know, you can talk about how, uh, of course, the grain exports continue to weaken. And, uh, you know, we're cautiously uh, hoping for uh, improvements there, but so, so far it hasn't really happened. Um, and then, of course, Brazil's production is strong. And I think with this uh, drop in prices uh, for corn and um, modest increase for soybeans, you know, it's just going to incentivize them to continue to plant even more soybeans as well. If you're interested in more premium content, feel free to subscribe to our report at compsac.com. And if you have any questions, give us a call at 712-227-1110. Thank you and have a nice day.